our topic today is not just simply about COVID-19, but what the heck happened? We're going to talk about Twitter files, censorship, and a story that, quite frankly, you'll never believe. A clear path forward requires looking back and learning. Good public policy requires human connection. It's a consideration of the facts, applying common sense and innovation. It's urban, it's rural, it's real life. We all have something to contribute. We all have a responsibility to get informed because there's a little piece of Canada in all of us, isn't there? Let's learn on this path together. This is Leaders on the Frontier. Well, I'm very excited to have today with us two preeminent scientists in the world, quite frankly, in public health. Dr. Jay Bhattacharya is a professor at Stanford University Medical School. He's a physician, epidemiologist. He's also a health economist and also a public health policy expert focusing on infectious diseases and vulnerable populations. And then we have Dr. Martin Koldorf. He's a professor of medicine at Harvard. He's a biostatistician and epidemiologist with expertise in detecting and monitoring infectious disease outbreaks and vaccine safety evaluations. And if that was not enough, he's also a senior fellow at the Brownstone Institute. And quite frankly, they're also not only smart, but they're also my friends. So I'm delighted to welcome them here today. Thank you, David. So good to be here. I would like to introduce this next clip. This clip is in the House of Representatives where Congresswoman Nancy Mace, and I believe she's from the uh, state of South Carolina, is frankly grilling former Twitter executives about their censorship of very important health information that matters to all of us. Apparently the views of a Stanford doctor are disinformation to you people. I, along with many Americans, have long-term effects from COVID. Not only was I a long hauler, but I have effects from the vaccine. It wasn't the first shot. But it was the second shot that I now developed asthma that has never gone away since I had the second shot. Um, I have tremors in my left hand and I have the occasional heart pain that no doctor can explain. And I've had a battery of tests. I find it extremely alarming Twitter's unfettered censorship spread into medical fields and affected millions of Americans by suppressing expert opinions from doctors and censoring those who disagree with the CDC. So my first question this morning of Ms. Gaddy, may I ask of you, where did you go to medical school? I did not go to medical school. I'm sorry? I did not go to medical school. That's what I thought. Why do you think you or anyone else at Twitter had the medical expertise to censor a doctor's expert opinion? Our policies regarding COVID were designed to protect individuals. We were seeing- You guys censored Harvard-educated doctors, Stanford-educated doctors, doctors that are educated in the best places in the world, and you silenced those voices. I have another tweet by someone with a following of a full 18,000 followers. This person put a chart from the CDC on Twitter. It's the CDC's own data, so it's accurate by your standards. And you all labeled this as misleading. You're not a doctor, right, Ms. Gaddy? No, I'm not. Okay. What makes you think you or anyone else at Twitter have the medical expertise to censor actual, accurate CDC data? I'm not familiar with these particular situations. Yeah, I'm sure you're not. But this is what Twitter did. They labeled this as inaccurate. It is the government's own data. It's ridiculous that we're even having to have this conversation today. It's not just about the laptop. This is about medical advice that expert doctors were trying to give Americans because social media companies like Twitter were silencing their voices. Okay, that clip is so powerful at so many levels. First of all, I should just tell you that Congresswoman deserves a, a medal for her approach with those former Twitter executives. And it's, it's almost comical in a dark way that they're talking about two physicians, namely you, Jay, and namely you, Martin. Um, They talked not only about the Stanford uh, physician, uh, Dr. Jay Bettacherry yourself, but also it was funny in the background, I don't know if you noticed this, but there's a a sheet of of communications that's going on that is from you, Dr. Martin Koldorf. So when you see that clip, what do you say? What, What goes through your mind? Well, that clip was from a tweet that was censored where I said that uh, uh, it's important to vaccinate older, high-risk people, but uh, if you have had COVID, you don't need a vaccine, and if you're young, you don't need it. 
So uh, that's accurate information. And it's pretty astonishing that uh, uh, somebody who knows nothing about public health decides what to censor or what not to censor. Yeah, it's, it's frankly uh, gobsmacking. And whether, it, I mean, the government was uh, pushing uh, the social media companies to do censoring on their behalf. But even if that wasn't the case, it's still bad for social media to, to, uh, to censor because that kills. It kills exactly. people. Exactly. They were actively censoring. What about you, Jay? I mean, I, I completely agree with Martin. Uh, the West has prided itself forever on um, on the uh, on our va- uh, our fundamental value of, that that we support the free exchange of ideas. Um, this wasn't a, a conversation about this wasn't you know uh, things that probably ought to be left off of social media. It wasn't child porn. It wasn't violent threats. What it was was a legitimate scientific discussion, a legitimate public health discussion by professionals in the field taking place in public on social media. And social media companies, Twitter, Facebook, Google, Reddit, you name it, took, took sides. They decided, based on no real argument, just simply raw power, that, that, that we, we, we were saying dangerous things, even though what we were saying was rooted in the scientific evidence. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, Martin mentioned something very important. Um, the government played a tremendously important role in this social media censorship. I don't believe they did it on their own. I believe it was actually the result of, of direct orders from the federal government in the United States, from the U.S. federal government. I, and I know this because I'm, me, Martin, and I are involved in a case brought by Ms., the Missouri Attorney General's office against the Biden administration. Um, this case, we've uh, the judge has permitted us to depose Tony Fauci to, uh, to look in to read government email communications with Twitter, Facebook. Um, it is a shocking picture, David, of, of government officials, including as uh, in, within the, the high in, inside the Biden White House, effectively threatening uh, Facebook, all these like social media companies, that if they didn't abide by the censorship demands, including lists of people to censor, ideas to censor, um, then they would lose their 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 sort of legal protection against uh, against you know uh, uh, you know being called a publisher, which would then would, would subject wow. to, to, to to legal threat. Um, I mean, it's it was basically a government propaganda campaign, and the censorship was a tremendously important part of that. And and the reason why it was done. Is because the government policy, which was so draconian, so out of line with the with previous practice, required that the public think that there was a consensus, a scientific consensus in favor of it, when there actually wasn't. It was an exactly. illusion. The censorship was in service of creating an illusion of consensus that never existed. Well, I, I think so many people would be shocked to hear this. In fact, today it's hard in many respects that many of the mainstream media don't even talk about this story. So in this situation, we have, why is this relevant to Canadians? I think it's directly relevant because 